So, Roger, let's go beyond the deficit and talk about other things that are affecting uh, business today, and specifically what we see in the yields, because goodness knows they've come up a long way really fast. Well, we, we've seen, to quote my friend Howard Marks, a sea change in the financial market environment uh, uh, in the sense that the very long, roughly 15-year period of ultra-low interest rates, at least I would argue, is over. It's not temporarily interrupted, it's over. And, uh, and now today, we, in round numbers, we have a 5% 10-year yield. And uh, we haven't seen that for, I think, since 2007. And I think a lot of market participants, and in particular to your question, uh, business leaders, are just beginning to, gra to grasp that we are in a new era in terms of the structure of interest rates. It's a profound change because it affects not just obviously cost of capital, but it affects uh, uh, asset allocation. Uh, it affects returns. I mean, if you're a financial, imagine you're a private equity firm and these, they are so ubiquitous. Uh, this fundamentally changes the return prospects uh, for them because the cost of that leverage is such that they can't leverage XYZ investment to the same degree today that they could have a year or two ago. So, but I think, I think a lot of people are just waking up to this, and I'm sure some people listening to this would disagree that we've seen the end of ultra-low interest rates, but I, I'm convinced we have. And, um, and, it, and it's really a profound change. Now, how much it affects you as a CEO depends on the nature of your business, how capital intensive it is. Are you, by the nature of your business, a, a, uh, to generate consistent free cash flow? Or are you, are you generating deficits instead and doing a lot of financing? So if you're, uh, if you're Apple, uh, you actually do borrow because of your international business versus domestic and the role of share buybacks. But you're not a net borrower uh, in terms of uh, net debt. And it, you know, it, it affects you, but it doesn't affect you very dramatically. But if you're uh, Blackstone or you're KKR or you're Apollo and so forth, very dramatic effect. So you say some corporate leaders are just waking up to this process. Is that, at least in part, the answer to a more fundamental question, at least I have? The economy seems to be charging along. When you look at GDP numbers, you look at retail sales, you look at so many indicators. Even the labor market may be loosening a bit, but it's still a pretty strong labor market. How can the economy be doing this well when we've had this many rate hikes out of the Fed and this increase in the yields on the, on the bonds? I think the economy is slowing now. Uh, you're right that it's still resilient. It's not falling off a cliff. We're not, uh, there's no evidence at the moment of an incipient recession. I mean, like next week or next month. But I think it is slowing. You look at the housing sector, and of course, the, the, the sharp rise in mortgage rates always would have the effect it's having here. But new home sales, uh, mortgage applications all sharply down, as you would imagine. Uh, and you look at uh, a whole series of other surveys. At Evercore, we do. Uh, a series of proprietary surveys, trucking, temporary employment agencies, uh, uh, airlines, uh, restaurants, a whole series of them, and we do them regularly, and I think it's quite a good set of data. And they're pointing to a serious slowdown. So the composite reading of our uh, surveys is above recession levels, but it's come down a lot. So I think the economy, despite the backward-looking strong data, is slowing down. Are we about to have a recession? I don't think so. I don't know about next year, but not. I don't think in the rest of this year, 2023. But there's definitely a slowdown occurring. By the way, for your data, I get Ed Hyman's slides every day, yeah. and I read them every day. Well, you know what I mean. I do know exactly what you mean. Yeah. I read those surveys every single day in some slide form. So, so how does a, a corporate CEO respond? I mean, obviously, there's a lot of different corporate CEOs, a lot of different reactions. But do they just pull on their horns at this point, in part because it's more expensive, but also in part because I, as CEO, don't know exactly where it's going. Well, and of course, it depends on what your business is. So you're seeing some surprising strength given the level of interest rates, given, given how old this recovery simply is. This recovery is more than three years old. It began in the early second half of 2020. Um, you know, you see Walmart doing very well. You see Procter & Gamble doing very well. And those are really broad-based companies. And they're a sign of the resilience of this economy. On the other hand, you know, you see some companies, there, was, there have been some uh, uh, big earnings reports the last day or two, which have been somewhat disappointing, Alphabet and so forth. Really depends on, 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 on the business you're in. 
but if you took, take all these earnings reports together, they do show resilience. I say it's slowing, but there's still considerable resilience, especially businesses that depend on the day in, day out consumer. Mm -hmm. Because the consumer still has, for example, considerable excess, pandemic related excess savings. Um, and as you say, labor markets remain pretty tight, and so consumers are doing well from an employment point of view. And a lot of consumers are right about even in terms of real after tax income, but still, they are resilient. Uh, we have a lot of uncertainty about exactly where the economy is going, where rates are going, things like that. We also have geopolitical uncertainty right now. Uh, we had Ukraine already, which was, uh, to many, a shock that we'd have a ground war in Europe at this point. Now we have Israel and Hamas. Uh, which we've had disputes about before. There have been problems over there, but boy, this is a pretty ugly one. And that's before you get to issues with China and making sure that we're handling that situation with Taiwan sufficiently. How does a corporate CEO internalize that if they do? Well, uh, at, the very, at this very moment, and it could be different tomorrow, uh, the, the tragedies, and they are tragedies, are uh, unfolding in Israel and Gaza uh, and on the other hand, as you say, Ukraine, uh, are not a major economic event mm -hmm. for the United States of America and for most chief executives, or almost any chief executives. So you're worried about it for lots of reasons, but probably not about what it's going to do to your next quarter or how you're going to plan your next year. Now, if, God forbid, the conflict in the Middle East becomes a wider one and I just hope this doesn't happen, but everybody's talking about the possibilities, uh, whether it's Hezbollah opening a second front against Israel, the role of Iran, and so forth. Um, we just have to hope that doesn't happen. But if it does, that will be, I think, a different matter uh, because financial markets, I think, would react very negatively to that. You could see much higher oil prices, for instance, and it could go from something that you think is terrible but doesn't affect your business to something that starts affecting your business, among other things, because it frightens consumers and frightens uh, customers. So uh, at this very second, probably doesn't affect your business and isn't a big economic event, but one has to worry whether that could change. So Roger, as you say so correctly, this is fundamentally a humanitarian issue, what we saw happen in Israel and what has been ongoing in Ukraine for some time, the people on the ground who are really whose lives are being affected profoundly. And we have to keep that uppermost in our minds. At the same time, there are business aspects, there are economic aspects. And so I want to ask this as delicately as I can. Are there opportunities from some of the dislocation we're seeing in the sense that if you have a strong balance sheet, if you have a strong company, some of the prices might be coming down because of increased yields and because of interest rates. Are there some companies saying, you know, this might be my opportunity to move into some area and make an acquisition, otherwise I could not have done? Well, an obvious area of opportunity that Ukraine in effect, the conflict in Ukraine created had to do with energy. So you know the United States is again, the United States, I'm sorry, is, is at an all-time high in terms of oil production. And a lot of the world, you know, has, has uh, reacted to the Ukraine conflict by saying, we don't want to be dependent on our prior sources of energy, especially if you're European. Uh, so the United, I would say the energy sector as a whole in the United States has taken advantage of that. And, and ramped up production. Um, you know, beyond that, uh, probably not that much. Uh, and uh, I think if, if this conflict in Israel and Gaza becomes wider, it's not an opportunity, it's a problem. Uh, so, um, I mean, the whole China uh, uh, dynamic is creating a lot of opportunities because a lot of People, of course, are diversifying their supply chains and moving uh, and investing in India, for example, or investing in Vietnam or Malaysia, what have you. And that's causing a lot of rethinking of investment. But in terms of Ukraine and, and, and the Israeli tragedy, uh, not quite yet.